Yo, what is going on YouTube? It's Wolfie here. Welcome back to the Wolfsburg save on FM16. This is episode 2 and here is a short list for the transfers that I'm going to attempt to make. Of course, I'm not going to sign all of them because that would be freaking ridiculous. And the way our bit wages are set up, like, we just, the season would be over because we just go to bankrupt, wouldn't we? Like, we just wouldn't have money. Um, but anyway... Right, so the, the, the three positions I really need to focus on because I, I'm learning from my mistakes. See, that's the smart thing in life. You've got to learn from your mistakes. Learning from my mistakes, not oversigning at all this season. Um, just not going to oversign at all ever in, the, in this save. Um, and the three positions I know that we need to really invest in is a right back, a new centre back and two new midfielders. We need two new midfielders. That is crucial. We definitely need two new midfielders, but we definitely we also it, it's not crucial a right back, but we do need one. And it's not crucial to get another centre back, but we do need one. So the main position I'm actually going to focus on first is securing two new midfielders. Once we have done that, if we have done that, then I will focus on the right back because that is our next um, kind of danger zone and then the center back so that's what we're going to be doing um of course you know the the players are relatively young because we actually have a relatively old squad um so it's not the especially the defense the defense is not the freaking youngest of squad um youngest of players sorry so it well besides rodriguez anyway so other than that we start need to start bleeding in some young players into the squad because it is quite bad so that is the first area we're going to start targeting um, but yeah, definitely need to get new mid two new midfielders. So once the transfers are done, you will hear my voice again. It will obviously be like in a couple of seconds. But for me, it's going to take probably about a good hour or something like that. I don't know. Yeah. Oh, nine clubs interested, one bid made, and it's from Schalke for five million pounds. And uh, the clubs interested are Fiorentina, Hanover from the Bundesliga, Newcastle, Leon, surprisingly, even though they got Lacazette, that does not make sense. Anyway, Sunderland, uh, Torino, and then we've got minor interest from Aston Villa, Swansea, and Schalke. But Schalke of the first team to put in the bid doesn't make sense. But okay, then we're gonna accept it anyway. Uh, that's five million pounds, really. Um, where is it? Where is it? Not in the first team plans. There we go. Oh, this is the bit where people are always get to mess up. But I'm, I think I think I know a reading because we want to qualify for the Champions League next season. So that's the expectations. I always go with the expectation of the board and then and then see what happens. Uh, Sherlock, Max, Cruz, and Dante not too happy about that. Urgh. I'm just man I'm, ju I'm just managing expectations. There's no point in me telling you all that you can do something if you don't if I don't believe it's possible. Uh, yeah, it's true. Um, yes, sorted, sorted. Mate, my scouts, my scout, my team's wanted. The team I'm trying to secure is wanted. Look, Merciman is wanted by Frankfurt. Then you got Zieg Ziegler, who's wanted by Mines. Then you got Juventus trying to approach Burrell, peasants. Then you got Athletic Bilbao trying to approach B B Burrell, peasants. Then you got Barcelona coming in for Messi Man, peasants. Then you got Catafe going after Ziggler, peasants. Then you got Rayo Valenciano going after Ziggler, peasants. Then you got Mercerman getting approached by Real Madrid, peasants. Then you got Valencia going after Burrell, peasants. Yeah, d don't know why you're getting excited, mate. It's just not happening. It's not. Eh. Oh, the worst thing has happened. My, my biggest nightmare. I hate these clauses. Arsenal have made a non-negotiable offer for £21.5 million for Ricardo Rodriguez and it's been accepted because it meets his buyout clause. <laughs> Nothing I can do. He's, he's gone. He's gone. I've got to find a replacement. That's Kevin De Bruyne and Rodriguez gone in the same season. Nah. <laughs> Just is good. We made a link with Columbus Crew in America, so they're getting that dosh in now. My start, my magic stars just dropped to my lap, so I'm gonna, yeah, get them now. Uh, transfers have been done, completed, locked, finished. You can see there, we've got 36k on the wages and one million pounds left on the remaining transfer budget which we're not obviously going to spend but i think we've done good business i don't think i've signed a load of players and i don't think i've uh, filled up random positions that don't need to be filled i think i've done the right business um so hopefully you guys agree and without further ado let's go and take a look at the transfers 
So, of course, you obviously know because it was earlier on in the episode, Bentner went to Schalke for £5 million. Pounds. Um, we weren't going to use the guy, didn't really see the point in keeping him. Um, so, yeah, he's now gone to Schalke and probably will be maybe a... I guess they're their second striker. Um, I'm not too sure. I haven't really looked at Schalke's. Um, I know they've got what's his name? Chick something, whatever his name is. Where is what's it called? Uh, is he? Yeah, Matt Ch Chipper. Him. They've got him. Um, they've got Hunter. They've got DeSanto. I don't really know where Bender fits in, to be honest. I'm, I'm not too sure. That's a bit of a surprise, that one, isn't it? So, um, anyway, I guess he's going to be their third or fourth strike. I really don't know how he's going to fit into Schalke squad, but he's gone and he's out of my way, so it doesn't really matter. Um, but, yeah, £5 million was the transfer fee, which I think is all right, considering he was valued at 5.5. He's now only gone up to 5.75. Um, not a lot, but, um, yeah, that, that's the deal that's happened. Um, some people who are into all the banter and stuff are going to be like, oh, you're so Lord Bender, and we'll be like, mate, it was never going to get used. Tim Close went to Stoke City for £3.5 million. Um, I kind of signed young, some new young defenders, some new blood into the squad. And I really didn't see the point in keeping this guy because he wasn't really going to offer me anything. I wasn't going to use him at all. Um, yeah, it was a bit of a low fee considering he was valued at £7.5 million. But, however, I wasn't going to get, I wasn't getting any offers around the um, upper, upper half of that. Like the £6 million mark or the £5 million mark. So I had to really go down to 3.5 and um, it was between Norwich and Stoke and he picked Stoke. So, so, um, yeah, he's gone there. Um, so he's only been with us for two seasons, hasn't had many appearances, so he wasn't really doing much, although the fans are upset about it. So I don't really get that, but okay, cool. Yeah. So, yeah, this one hurt because this was completely out of my control. I had no control over this whatsoever. Nothing. I, had, I couldn't do anything. Um, I didn't even know he had a, a buyout clause in his contract. I, I, if I knew, I would have offered him a new contract, even though he would have probably earned like what he's earning now, like over, over, probably would have earned more than 94k to be honest. Um, but yeah, I had no control over this. One minute I was rejecting offers, I was like, mm, nah, you're not getting in Wenger, you peasant, you're, you're a side man, you're a freaking, you're a freaking Mr. Kipling cake packet. And then next minute, he, he's just planked a 21.5 million pound offer, and it's like he's gone, just, just like that. Like completely out of my control. So in one season, not even one season, in the summer window, we've lost two major players in Rodriguez and Kevin De Bruyne. Like absolutely horrible. Um, so we're going to see what we can do. We're going to have to, you know, find well, not find a new star player, but we're going to have to. Someone's going to have to step up. Someone's going to have to take that next level. And for me, it's got to be Schürrle. But we'll have to see what happens. So for the end, I signed Lucas Romero from. Velez, I think it is, yeah, Velez, um, for £4.3 million. Pounds. He turns into an absolute machine on FM. Um, in the past FM, on FM15 especially, he just turns into an absolute monster. It's horrible. Like, sometimes you don't even want to look at him because it just hurts. Um, but, yeah, he is now at Wolfsburg. Um, I'm going to try and bleed him into the first team properly. So, I'm not going to rush him and just plank him into the squad. Um, however, right now he has to start this first game against Bayern Munich in the next episode because we've got too many injuries and that's why I signed um, two new midfielders um, because literally, you know, it, it, it's, it's, we, are, we were lacking depth in midfield but I'm really happy with signing this guy like 21 years of old, 21 years age, 21 years old, I can't talk today. Um, you know, he's already got the stamina and the natural fitness there on 16, uh, got bravery on 15, determination on 15, teamwork 15 he's going to be a solid solid ball winning midfielder um, i'm not going to be using him as a um, defensive midfielder at all um, but it'll most likely be used as a ball winning midfielder and he's going to be solid like you, you can just tell so yeah really happy with that and 4.3 million pounds for a player like this guy with his caliber is just like it, it's that's a bargain to be honest weird one this deal because i signed this guy if you remember go and watch my leverkusen save go and watch it because i signed signed this guy nacho and he was an absolute packet he was an absolute side man like he just didn't do anything um and then he left he wanted to leave. i think he wanted to leave and i think i sold him i'm not too sure i can't remember clearly but i know i signed him with my labor to the same so he's kind of he's kind of easing back into the um he's kind of he's kind of just he, he's, he's becoming a famous person in my series ain't he like he's just popped back up but this time around he's actually decent and we signed him for 3.8 his value shot up to 9.5 million pounds He's a quality player, got that three and a half star um, current ability and potential. 
and he actually looks quite solid this time around. Like he doesn't look too bad. And um, we're going to be playing him in, on the right. Um, you can see there that's where he's more comfortable. And I did say I needed a new right back. Um, I didn't say, as I said, it wasn't a crucial position that I wanted to focus on, but it was a position that we needed to just find at least uh, someone who, not even if they were crap, like we just need to find someone. Um, but to sign Nacho, who's very versatile in defence, can play centre back, right back, and is familiar on the left as well. Um, it's very, it's, that that was a very handy deal to be honest. And um, and I saw his name pop up, I couldn't believe it because I was like, mate, I just signed you before. You're a no one. A year later, you're someone. It's weird how life works, isn't it? So Hintergo was offered to me by um, one of our scouts that we signed. Um, literally just just was like planked him on the screen. Was like, look, here's this kid sign him. And I looked at him and I was like, he's got potential. He's got swept of potential. So I decided to just it because it was a cheap deal. I just thought, why the heck not? Like, let's just take the risk. Sometimes you got to risk. With these players and Martin Hintergrera um, looks like he's going to be um, quite quite interesting in the future so I'm very happy with this I don't know whether I'm going to be using him this season um, or whether I want to loan him out unfortunately right now Dante's out with an injury so he is going to be starting however when Dante's back I'll have to look at my options and think where I want to what I want to do with him and where I want to go with this um, but yeah, it's a very good deal. Very, very good deal. Um, and, he, and he looks like he's going to be quite, you know, solid in the future as well. He can play in the midfield as well, which is very, very good for cover, cover and depth. So yeah, Martin Hinto regret him. Yeah, because his name just doesn't like me. It's Pabosha, we shine Pabosha from Santos for 11.5 million pounds on F15. It was such a struggle to get it. No, literally, on FM15, it was an absolute struggle to get this guy. Literally, like, it was just like, it was ridiculous. Like, he'd always go to Porto Dortmund, but nah, this time we got him. Because I just had to. It, it, it was just screaming my name. And I did, and obviously, we signed, um, we sold Bentner to Schalke. So. I had to sign him. I had to sign a striker. I had to sign someone because we only had two strikers on, on in the team. So I had to get someone in. And I, why not spend eleven point five million pounds on the next Neymar? You girl, yeah. <laughs> huh, don't know. One man, one desire to cover every position on the field. It's Davy Klesson. No, no, no. No, but we did sign him back. He is back. Yes. Um, Nine million pounds was the fee. Yeah. Yeah, so here's um, Rodriguez's replacement. Seed Kolasinac from Schalke. We signed him for... I forgot the fee, actually. No, it's just... is great. Just smart. Good memory, that is. Um, signed him for 10 million pounds. Uh, considering we got 21.5 million pounds. Um, and this guy kind of reminds me of... Rodriguez not 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 because I miss him and I want him back. I want you back uh, But mainly because like I tried to find a player similar to what Rodriguez looked like at the age of 22 And this was the closest I could find um, I think he's very solid For a 22 year old. I think he's just only gonna get better with age and experience especially the mentors for like like um, the off the ball and and the, and the work rate the work rate is already high enough to be honest determination decisions concentration stuff like that are just all going to improve with age and um, the the physical for me is perfectly fine balance is on 17 natural fitness on 18 pace on 17 stamina on 17 e solid he is a very solid left back um, actually offered to me by one of my scouts so this, this, they put this they put their team on their back in it like just offered me two players and they were absolutely amazing I, I, I remember actually I was gonna go after this guy in my Southampton save because he was actually transfer listed um, by Schalke and I think they only wanted like six million pounds or something like that for him and um, we missed out obviously but yeah not this time didn't miss this time freaking swung the fish in there and drilled him in that sounds wrong that sounds very wrong I'm done so we spent 42.1 million pounds and the total income was 30 million pounds so um yeah very good business you can see there are loads of freeze just random freeze from players that we weren't going to use i don't think they're at any oh no they're not I don't think they're they're, they're gonna make it anywhere I, I don't really see that happening nope let's check vojic nope and let's check conde unless they go to like the lowest ranks in the in in a the league then no yeah no they they, they didn't make it anywhere. So yeah, that has been the transfer business. 
Um, and if we take a look at the three seasons, how we've done. So we took it at 3 0. Um, I think his name's Gwila. Gwila Voju. Gwila Voju or Villa Ga Him. He scored. Uh, Kelly Guerrier. I'm going to have to get used to these names because it's, it's shocking. Um, then we've got Andre Scherl. I'm not even going to pronounce some of their names because it's just shocking. Scherl scores again in a 1 1 draw against Gallen. Against FC Will, Scherler scores two. Tim Close scores one. Then against FC um, that guy scores again. Scherler on the score sheet again. Cruz and Nacho also scoring, getting his first goal for the club. Max Cruz in the score sheet in a 3 0 win over Boleslav. Um, we beat them 3 0, yeah, as I just said. <laughs> Cruz scored in the first minute and the 11th minute. Uh, that guy scored again. Josh, we're going to call him Joshy. We are. We're going to call him Joshy. And against Porto, we got smacked for one. Very embarrassing defeat, to be honest. Um, just wasn't really a great performance. Like, complete team just completely shut down. Uh, yeah, halfway through, I just put my head down and just took a nap. Because just was getting embarrassed. Um, but Christian Teo is actually very good in this game. So I might have to get a scout report on him. Because he was running the team like, a, like it was happy days. So, got DFL Super, Super Cup in the next episode. So um, hopefully you will join me for that. I hope you have enjoyed this episode. It's kind of different to what I'm usually doing. As I mentioned, trying to change up the format and style of my episodes. Um, leave a like if you did enjoy the episode. Subscribe to the channel for more of this series and I will see you next time. Peace.